Hey guys, it's your boy Progress, and welcome back to a brand new video. If you want to follow or contact me on my other social media, I've got it on screen and in the description, so if you want, then go check those out. If you haven't watched my previous video on Taz Taylor, then I highly suggest you go watch that first, as some of the things being mentioned in this video will be referring back to the last video, but if you do need a bit of a refresher, I will be bringing context from the last video into this one, just in case. The main thing you need to know is who Chelji and Taz Taylor are, as they are the main focus of today's video. Video. Taz Taylor is a multi-platinum Grammy-nominated producer who is also the CEO of a record label known as Internet Money Records. And Chelji is an artist out of the UK who is signed to Taz Taylor's label Internet Money Records, who basically came out saying that Taz Taylor was trying to make her an industry plant and that she had a lot of issues with her label after she had told them that in her contract they could not change the things about her they were trying to change. But now that you know that, let's get into the video. Do you guys remember in the last video when I said this. Like I said, think what you want, but I'm just saying, every single time that Taz tries to talk and thinks he's making himself sound better, it just gets worse. Do you think that Taz Taylor listened to my advice and just completely stopped talking about it? Or do you think that he decided to keep talking and ended up making things even worse for himself? D okay, d you don't need time to think about it. Obviously, he made it worse. So that's why I'm back here again talking about this today. Because after my video came out, so much happened. Firstly, I got an email from YouTube telling me that I had a privacy complaint put onto my newest upload, which I obviously wasn't too happy about that. So I decided to go over and check to see if Taz Taylor had posted anything about it and came to the screen that said he blocked me. So I'm guessing he's not too big of a fan of the channel anymore, guys. Also, I totally wonder who it was who sent in the privacy complaint. I went to the timestamp provided where they show where I supposedly infringed on someone's privacy rights, and of course it led me to the place where I had said that I was in a call with Taz Taylor and then showed clips of the call. Hmm, wonder who it was. But as I posted when I first got the privacy complaint, I will remind everyone once again that in Canada, we only have a one-party consent recording law when it comes to phone calls, meaning that as long as one person who is a part of the conversation in the call knows that it's being recorded, then it is legal to record. And I knew I was recording and I was a part of the conversation, therefore it was legal. And obviously YouTube had agreed with me because they did nothing about the video. They let the 48 hours pass and it's still up. So it's really awesome to see that YouTube did take the side of the creator when someone tried to wrongly abuse the systems YouTube has in place. So thank you so much, YouTube. I think that's awesome. Because even if I did live in a country that had laws that needed two-party consent for recording phone calls, in the call, Taz Taylor asked me, was I recording? And I said, yes, I was. And he kept going. Oh, are you recording this shit right now or no? Oh, I mean, yeah, I record everything. All right, well, I'm just gonna tell you right now. So I don't wanna hear anything more in the comments about people saying like, oh, do you, you can't record someone's phone call. Yes, I can. Oh yeah, Taz Taylor also went on a massive rampage in posts that I wish I screenshotted beforehand because he went and deleted every post from before July 29th. All I've got now is what I screenshotted before I guess he went through and wiped all of his tweets. But one of the things I find hilarious is one of the posts where Taz Taylor said that he was gonna go in and exposed that all of these lies and stuff that were being said about him in videos, and then he proceeded to delete whatever it was that supposedly was going to prove that all the videos were lies. So that doesn't seem too trustworthy to me when the truth was deleted. It also doesn't help that as I pointed out, it seems like Taz Taylor was trying to abuse YouTube's features, which nothing that I said was against YouTube's guidelines, and I actually pride myself on the fact that I'm able to make content that I know follows their terms of service. So I know he was doing it with ill intent. And once again, it kind of just seems weird to me that he would go back and delete all of his posts. It just kind of makes it seem as if he's trying to hide evidence of himself lying. But yeah, let's start off with a bombshell. That being the thread that Chelji posted to her Twitter. I'm only going to be summarizing the biggest stuff that she talks about. So if you do want to look at the full thing for yourself as it's very long and detailed, then I'm leaving a link to that thread in the pinned comment of this video for you guys to check out yourself. But yeah, a lot of very interesting stuff came out of this thread, so let's get into it. Like how apparently Taz Taylor was constantly flirting with Chelji and also was trying to
to get her to sleep with him even though she would always deny him. She even showed messages where he himself admits that she always denies him. To me, the most unsettling thing about this is the fact that Taz Taylor is Chelji's boss. He is the CEO of the label she's signed to. The power dynamic there is just way too strange for me to find being normal. Especially knowing for that most of the time that Chelji was in the US at first, she was relying on Taz for income because when she was taken from the UK to go down, she did not have a work visa, so she had no other way of getting money. Which is something that we'll get into later. Something that's also disturbing is that according to Chelji, Taz Taylor took control over her social media and went through her Instagram DMs with a guy she had been seeing at the time and went through her nudes. It also doesn't help that Chelji recalls multiple times where Taz Taylor was being very controlling of not letting her be around other guys and even not letting her out of his sight when they would go onto a tour. And as a final blow, apparently Taz Taylor tried to set up a meeting where he had said that to Chelji, if she wanted to stay with her boyfriend that she had gotten, that she wouldn't be allowed to make music with him. So yeah, you can kind of see that the picture here being painted is not too pretty. The next thing I want to get into is that Taz Taylor said in deleted posts that I could not retrieve that apparently almost everybody in internet money didn't like Chelji. So she ended up going and saying, actually, there are a lot of internet money members that don't like Taz himself and what he makes them do, but they're too afraid to speak out against him. She backed this up with screenshots from somebody that I've actually talked about in depth on this channel before, that being Ian Dior. Also, if you're wondering why his name is Almo in the screenshots, it's because, as I said in my video where I explained how Ian Dior would be an industry plant, he was actually going by the name of Almo before he ended up moving and doing stuff with Internet Money Records and made a name change. In the conversation between Chelji and Ian, he expresses that he has a lot of anxiety due to Taz trying to rush him into signing a deal, which he clearly does not want, as he's asking if he can use our lawyer to figure stuff out. I'm assuming that this deal ended up being being the one that got him the deal with 10k records that publicly came out about a month after sending these messages. Ian also expressed that he doesn't like living in Taz's house because it's causing him anxiety living there, as well as all of the rush deal stuff is getting to him and he doesn't like that he has Taz's manager as well. Which makes sense since because Taz has more money and the most influence compared to Ian, then that would mean that if the manager wants the most amount of money, he's probably going to listen to what Taz wants more than what Ian wants, rather than him being completely unbiased towards Ian. As I've said about a lot of these plants is that when they are just taken when nobody knows about them They often have very little control of what they get to do The worst thing about it is that a lot of these guys often don't know how to read contracts or understand what they're getting themselves into So they end up putting themselves at risk of getting horrible deals that they can't get themselves out of and have to deal with that for a very long time because of course when they don't get the time to naturally grow and be part of the industry then they don't really understand and how the industry works and why things are being done to them that they are. Chelji also showed screenshots from a guy who it also seems like Taz Taylor is trying to plant, that being poor Stacy, who is also complaining of how he hates living at the house and he wants to be able to enjoy himself. Plus, she had a message from Trevor Daniel, the other artist signed to Internet Money Records, where he clearly is not happy with his living conditions at the house either. Chelji also says that she and her boyfriend had worked with a bunch of members of Internet Money, including multiple people such as Trevor Daniel, poor Stacy and Ian Dior. But poor Stacy tried to deny that he ever worked with Chelji and her boyfriend, so then she said that if he wanted, she could pull up the security camera footage that they had of him, as well as the save session that she had on her boyfriend's laptop working with poor Stacy. He then proceeded to delete his reply. With what these artists are saying directly contradicting what Taz is trying to make as the narrative, you're probably slowly starting to see that Taz Taylor has a very big issue with being truthful, or just taking something that was once the truth and just ripping so much away from it and out of it to the point where it's not even recognizable anymore. But now let's move on to something else. Earlier I had mentioned how Chelji did not have a work visa when she first went down to the US, and that's why she was relying so much on Taz Taylor for income. Well, you also may remember that Chelji is signed to Internet Money Records. This being backed up by Taz Taylor himself, where he had said that they quickly tried to get Chelji signed after only hearing one of the songs 
songs that she made. But the biggest issue here is how did Chelji sign and work for Taz Taylor if she didn't have a work visa? Well, Chelji gave me the answer to that question and she said, quote, also, I got paid illegally. I was on an ESTA, not a working visa when I signed my contract. That's illegal. I also got opened a student bank account with fake documents saying I'm leasing a room in the USA in order to get a bank account, end quote. She also did say though that now she does have a legal bank account, plus she also explained to me how the process of what was going on was illegal with her signing and also working well in the US without the visa. To qualify for an ESTA, you can only go and negotiate contracts or be able to go to business related meetings, but you cannot finalize anything or work well on an ESTA, as strictly stated in their documentation, meaning that the contract that Chelji signed would be fraudulent. She continued saying, quote, I got employed as soon as I put my pen on that paper. That's illegal. I had no idea this was illegal until two months ago. They acted like it was fine and nothing was wrong when the whole signing was done shady and illegal. As for the lawyer, he got $25,000 to make sure it went through as legal, when it was far from it, end quote. Now, I won't say anything myself as this this is what Chelji is saying about the situation, but seeing as she's claiming that she only had an ESTA and the documentation does state you can't work or sign contracts under it, as well as Taz Taylor confirming he tried to quickly sign her, I doubt they really tried to work out a working visa, which would mean, if true, that it was illegal for her to sign that contract. And that's not very good because now we're going from having people being rushed into signing contracts without really understanding understanding them to now the contract being signed being illegal. But now let's get into some other parts where Taz tried to lie because as you guys know this isn't a rare thing but of course I want to try and hold Taz as accountable as possible. So let's go into it. Many times to me Taz tried claiming that he had no assistance in trying to make Ian Dior's name Ian Dior. Even though before working with Internet Money Records his name was Almo and then he randomly decided to change it as soon as he started working with them. Ian was making music under his last name, which is Omo. Omo is his last name. Ian is his middle name. Um, and he, because he just wasn't serious enough to where he's like, I need a brand, I need all this shit. So, as you heard, Ian supposedly didn't take music seriously enough, which, as in last video, we completely debunked that as being false, because Taz himself said that Ian Dior spent $4,000 out of pocket to make a music video that is unreleased that was for the song Unforgettable. But through even more digging, I was able to find on a channel called Official Pop a screen recorded part from an Adam22 live stream on No Jumper where it shows that Ian used to go as well by the name of Lil Rock, and he actually had sent in the song Unforgettable to be able to get it promoted. Which also proves that Taz is lying again when he said that Ian had never tried to establish a brand other than being Almo, because you can see on screen, this being from December of 2018, he tried going by Lil Rock as well, which was something he tried to make a brand, as he was perfectly comfortable promoting it. And he can't just use the excuse anymore of like, oh, what, Almo was his last name, so he wanted to change it to be something else because he didn't want to use his last name. Well, okay, well then how do you explain poor Stacy's name change? Was his name Lido Zantana and he wanted to change it because it was part of his last name? Yeah, I'm not really thinking so. So once again, the things that Taz Taylor says don't seem to add up. But there is still something important about that song that Ian got promoted and made a music video for, but I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But now let's talk about another lie that Taz got himself caught into by his own producer by accident. This being that Taz has continuously tried to make claims that he bought himself out of his own label deal so that he didn't have to deal with it anymore, so technically, the artist he signed weren't his anymore. But if you watched my last video, you'd know I showed a bunch of things that made me think that I don't really think that he's actually out of his label deal just yet, but that he's trying to get the distraction to be pushed away from the fact that he did all of these things with these artists screwing them over, and instead trying to just say, well, they're 
not my artist anymore, so that's not my problem. But while Chelji was arguing with one of the internet money producers, KC Supreme, he accidentally let it slip that, quote, he isn't released yet, still battling to be out, end quote. Meaning that once again, Taz has lied about something that is so easy to just tell the truth about. I still don't understand in the first place how Taz would think it's admirable that he bought himself out of his own deal so that he can just say they're not his artists. Like what, we're supposed to be proud of you or we're supposed to be so supportive of the fact that the only two artists you have signed that both are having trouble with the label, you just left them in the dust while you bought yourself out to run off? Really? Really? You think we're supposed to think that's good? Okay, so now like I said, I'm gonna get into the even more confusing stuff with Ian Dior's come up because this stuff just seems super crazy. The quick rundown of what was discussed in the last video was that Taz Taylor originally sent me an Instagram DMs saying that Nick Mira was the one who found Ian when he wasn't taking music seriously, which isn't really true, and he built up his brand with him and that that's kind of where it ended. But then Taz Taylor in a call told me that no, he reached out to Ian after Logan Mize had done a music video with him and Logan Mize showed him the music video. But then Ian himself claims that he met Nick Mira while playing Rocket League and that he ended up meeting Taz after that. So none of their stories really match. But in the last video, I did say that I thought that the Logan Mize story that Taz told me in the call made the most sense, but I'm gonna kind of take myself back on that one because of a few things that came out that I realized. Now this is going to be more of a theory, so I'm in no way claiming that this is actually what happened. I'm just giving you guys what I think happened based off of information I found. I think that the unreleased music video for the song Unforgettable that Taz claims was paid for out of pocket by Ian Dior wasn't actually paid for by Ian and instead was paid for by Taz Taylor as a test to see if Ian had what it takes. Things that support this are, why would Ian save up and spend 4k on a music video that he supposedly had nowhere to put it out. Even if I had nowhere to put it out, I would literally put it anywhere because I spent $4,000 on it. Also, why would Ian spend $4,000 on his first music video when at the time it seemed like he probably had less than a thousand followers and also had nowhere to supposedly put it? Are we supposed to believe that he just saved up this $4,000, dropped it on a music video and had absolutely no plan as to what he would do with the music video once it was done? I'm not an idiot. I don't think that's how that works. And apparently since Ian didn't know anybody like Taz at the time, that would mean that since he was all the way from Corpus Christi, Texas, he would have had to pay for the flight all the way down to LA, paid for a hotel himself to stay in, and all the food that he had to eat for meals throughout the day, meaning that it would have been a little bit more than $4,000 for this music video to be done. Also, I really don't believe that Logan Mize would just do a music video for 4K for some random person, especially if they had no other connection towards him. Because why would he go and do a music video for somebody completely unknown when he's done work for people like Lil Skies, Wiz Khalifa, Cole Bennett, and the list goes on. I don't really know how much it adds to this point, but I will make it clear that Logan Mize posts pictures or little clips from every video shoot that he goes on, and a pretty thorough scan of his Instagram shows absolutely nothing from the Ian Dior video leading me to believe that once again, it was never meant to be released and it was just a test run for Ian by Taz. Also, remember like I said about how Unforgettable was the song that Ian tried to get promoted by Adam22 on the No Jumper live stream? Well, that was also the song that ended up becoming the music video that Logan Mize shot, which apparently was the same one that Taz Taylor found. And what is it that's weird about that? Well, it just happens that the only song off of that little album that Ian had put out as Lil Rock, that song is the only one that has listed producer credits. And who were the producers, you might be wondering? Well, Touch of Trent and Side Piece, who are both producers for internet money. So I think you kind of get where I'm going with this. I truly think that internet money has been working with Ian a lot longer than has actually been talked about because if those were the producers for the song, why did it never come out from Ian, Taz, or anybody else that it was actually Side Piece and Touch of Trent who were the first ones to work with Ian? Once again, nothing is adding up. 
Now, just before my closing statements, I want to go over how Taz Taylor continues to flip-flop on his stance of industry plants. As you can see, he's now decided to post saying that if you think that industry plants are a thing, then that's just a term made by haters to hate on people who have good teams. Taz, man, you cannot go a week without contradicting yourself, I swear. Because that's funny, because before my video had come out, Taz was claiming that industry plants are people who are given label resources while claiming that they're not signed to a label. And even in the call that I had with Taz Taylor, he said that I was right about baby goth and that she was an industry plant. An industry plant is someone who just pops up out of nowhere, like, I'm gonna be real with you, bro. Like, I think fucking baby goth is a fucking industry plant. Man, that really sucks, guys. Because now if you agree with Taz Taylor, you have to agree Taz is a hater. He called baby goth an industry plant, and that's not okay. Like I said, it's so hilarious how Taz continues to try and act like this big, tough guy and be all about the business, but then something as small as being called out for lying turns him into a massive baby. Like I said, though, with the last video, I really don't want anybody to just go after Taz Taylor. The whole point of these videos is to try and hold these people accountable. I want Taz to stop lying first off and stop using artists in the poor way that you are as well as stop making industry plants. Stop taking these dudes when they are absolute nobodies and completely making them develop their sound off what you want. And if you're one of those hundred people per video that I get who are commenting saying, but why are industry plants bad though? Well, go watch my video that's called Industry Plants Are A Bad Thing and you'll get all your answers there. And just remember, as always, it should be art over algorithm. And I do suggest that you guys should go and check out Chelji's music as she's been going through a lot with this situation and I really hope the best for her. So if you do want to go listen to her, she is very talented. I'll leave a link to her SoundCloud in the description below. My personal favorite song from her is called Bad, but you know, go check her out and let me know what you think. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot. If you guys do enjoy this video, then like it. And that way I will be able to know that this is the type of stuff you guys find interesting because that helps me out a lot. These videos do often take quite a bit of time, but I try my best to get these out every once in a while. I'd also like to give a quick thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are awesome. And a special thanks to my $10 and up patrons. Those being Scrubby, Tazir, Medusa Lives, Marshall, Milano, Farsky, and Frushmark. You guys are so awesome. Thank you so much for supporting the channel the way that you guys do as it helps me pay every month for the editing software that I use and just the equipment that I'm using to make these videos and upgrade all that stuff to make it as best that I can. So thank you guys. You are all so awesome. But like I said, I do hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Close my hand, say we can. I know that I love you, said that I brought you part of the plan. No matter what you, I'll be there for you because of me.